Senior Life Journeys presents Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia, a podcast designed to help caregivers find knowledge, power, hope, and smiles in their dementia caregiving journey. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. Here is your host, best-selling author, Carol Howell. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Dementia. I'm always glad when you join us and I'm always glad to bring you some good dementia education. Well, today I am honored to have the author of this wonderful book, Breakfast Memories. Oh my word, you've got to know, and I've told you before that I don't like to cry. This book made me lay in my bed one night as I read it and cried all by myself, my husband over there snoring. I'm reading this book crying which I'm not sure I appreciate from the author. I wasn't expecting that. But I said, I've got to interview her and tell tell you guys about her. So right now, I would like to welcome onto the show Miss Kate Hanley, the author of Breakfast Memories, A Dementia Love Story. Hey, Kate, how are you? Well, hello, Carolyn. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, my pleasure. Well, folks, I am, as you folks know, down in the southern tip of southwest Florida, and Kate is, well, she's not here. She's in the, Mount, the Adirondack Mountains, and um, our temperatures are slightly different. And, Kate, you said you've already had snow? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we've had, had snow. snow. It's, it's October 30th. 30th. We, we have, have had, had snow. snow. Yes. Oh, my word. Very much? No, 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 just just it's the beautiful flakes that come through the air, and you say, uh, "Okay, it's time to take in the summer furniture." <laughs> yeah, I think so. Kate, do you know we don't even have furnaces in our homes? No furnaces. Yeah. There's like yeah. three days a year when it, when it gets cool. So when we moved here, we brought with us our ceramic heaters. You know those little ones that they're not big like maybe a foot tall i have two of them my daughter just laughed she said you're such old people mommy you're not going to need those here those two days a year i will be warm she will be cold and i will be warm so there you go well, and mama knows best and careful i don't have air conditioning i don't need well, it there you go isn't that interesting that, yeah, oh, I yeah i can't imagine I've never lived anywhere where i didn't need air conditioning Mm-hmm. Well, folks, this book is just, it's beautiful. I love the shape of it, first of all. It, it um, whoops, go this way so you guys can see. I'm not good with this camera business. <laughs> um, this is a wonderful story that she wrote. And when you start reading it, you think it's going to be her mom's story because mom had dementia. But you quickly learn, at, learn that it's dad's story. And, well, maybe it's both of their stories, but I just so, Dad's story just touched my heart so much. And, Kate, tell us the premise of this book. So, So, when when my my father passed, or before before my father passed, passed, I had had moved both of my parents parents with me um, to to come live with my sons and my husband and I, because my mom had dementia and my father was failing, and he would not allow help to come in, Carol, as many with dementia are finding, there's a real, real need of protection in a couple. And so we basically went into Rochester, New York, and picked them up and moved them with me. Um, And so my father died immediately, basically. Which was and not the direction you were expecting your story to at go. All, at all. Carol, I wasn't all. expecting that when I read the book. I'm like, whoa, wait, what? <laughs> a little bit of a spoiler alert, right? Yeah. But he died immediately. And what I found when I was cleaning out his house was an answer, Carol, to what I couldn't answer myself, which was, why is mom so happy? So many that have dementia become angry, Mm -hmm. and mom was just happy, happy, happy. Mm -hmm. And when we were closing out the house, and I don't know if that's the part that you're going to read, Carol, but when we were closing out my family home, I found... You found stop, stop. Your dad told you at one point, he said something to you, that when you found this particular thing... It resonated. What was it Dad said to you? So he told me that, obviously, his wife of 65 years was the best part of his life. And that what I discovered in my conversation with him, Carol, was a love language that I never saw as a kid. I looked at them as parents, never two people in love, never. And he told me that every day he wrote her poetry, Carol, 
when he found out dementia was setting in and there was nothing he could do. He took a pen in his hand and every morning on a napkin, on a napkin, about how he loved her and wrote, there was darkness, wrote of happy times, wrote every morning to her. And they would sit together and read. And he wanted her, he believed, very spiritual, both of them, that there was something he could do to help her because he knew she was going to pass. Little did he know. Little did he know. He had no idea. You guys, let me read to you. It says, she is at the house that she grew. you grew up in, I guess, Kate. Correct, yeah. Going through mom and dad's things. Right. And she says in her book, Oh my God, here they are. I placed my right hand on my heart as I saw the pile of daily poetry written and dated, proclaiming his love for her and of his fight to remind her of their love as they both battle against their disease. A flash of memory brought me back into the past as I looked at the stack of sealed napkins. I knew these napkins. I had seen his morning set up in kindness to her as she sat down at her spot at the kitchen table on my overnights at their home during the years of their declining health. I remember specifically one morning when I saw a sonnet at the table and told Dad that I thought it was so sweet. He gently smiled and did not reply, as if it were private between them, not for anyone else. These were the secrets of his heart. He didn't boast of the sentiment written on the napkin. He didn't comment on the writing from his soul. He didn't comment on their life together. He didn't bring me into the intimate conversation of what was written from him to his love. Their love language belonged only to them. Now, I'm just going to tell you folks, I'm trying hard not to, but that's just heart-wrenching. That is a story of love. Uh, oh my word, you've got to treasure that for all of your life. To have, to realize you came from parents who loved each other so deeply so much. that this is their story. What a blessed individual you are, Kate. Thank, Thank you, and I agree. Mm. Thank you, Carol. That's just something. Okay, I'm going to keep reading a little bit more here. You guys hold on. Kate, you can hear your own words coming from somebody else's mouth. <laughs> I walked in holding Dad's box as if the box held a newborn baby. I found Linda at the nurse's station and took the bag of napkins out of the box. I carefully placed the bag down on the counter and explained that this bag of napkins was more than just that. What I brought was the outpouring of my dad's heart. I explained how he'd written these poems each and every morning and how they sat next to Mom's breakfast plate. Reluctantly, I pulled the top napkin from the bag, and I watched as Linda's eyes read the poem and filled with tears. Now, Linda is at the care home where your mom was. You are correct, yeah. She took my hands into hers. Kate, she said, can I put these in a remembrance book for your mom? Then we can place it next to her every morning at breakfast. I nodded, and I let the tears fall down my face. And Kate, that's what they did. Now tell us what happened after that. So after that, my mom, who hadn't been eating Carol, before that a phone call had come into my home and it was, a, Kate, there's something wrong with your mom. We think we may have to adjust her, her schedule because often those with dementia, their cycle and their timing is off. And so oh, your mom stopped eating. She stopped eating breakfast. She would sit, Carol, and as the nurses explained to me, she would fidget. Mm -hmm. She would fidget and press the napkin and fidget and press. And it was. But she had a napkin. But she had a napkin and fidget. And when the nurses called, and I was home with the boys and my husband, and they said, you know, Kate, we're going to change your schedule. We just wanted to let you know. It was an informational call, Carol. Sure. And so all I heard, Carol, and this is what I cried, is that she was fidgeting with a napkin like she was looking for something. I jumped in the car, and that's the part of the story that you read where I found Linda. Mm -hmm. And said, Linda, there's something here. 
May I say after what happened? Yes, please. Girl, she ate. She ate? She, she sat down. She ate. Oh, she cold bumps. Girl, she pressed the napkins. She oh, found the love language that she was looking for. She remembered. My father beat dementia. My mom remembered that she was loved. My mom remembered why she was happy. She wasn't an anxiety person. She was happy. She was loved. Happiness. He beat medical science. He beat. He Kick won. it to the curb, buddy. <laughs> he won. And I, I, oh. I just so clearly remember being renewed, mm -hmm. being rejoiced. I was not exhausted. Oh. For moments, I wasn't exhausted. I wasn't tired. I just kept saying, Dad, you did it. Yes, you did it. You God know. is good. Amen. That was Absolutely. oh, that's when I just sat in the bed and just cried. I went, Dad, gone up. That, that mm. you it's could, if Hollywood wanted to make a story, they could not have come up with that. It, and it, it sounds it, like a Hollywood story, though. It sounds like oh, that didn't happen. Somebody's making this up because it's a Hallmark movie that needs to end well. But this happened. This was oh, real. Carol, I mm. absolutely happened, and it is. It is still, it just renewed every ounce of me. Every mm. ounce. And you know, more importantly, it renewed my mom. Yes. That goal. My father didn't know that I was going to write a book with this. Mm -hmm. My father knew that if he could tell me what to do, what to do, and he did. And he did. And, and she responded. She Carol. responded. It's just amazing. So in Kate's last chapter... It's called, and the greatest of these is love. Isn't that the truth? Nothing better. Um, and boy, did you live that. You saw that. Oh. Kate, I wish you would turn to page 81 and read um, your last two paragraphs there. I'd love to. And just so we can note, Carol, today is October 30th. Oh, my word. Go ahead and tell them why that's important. So, page 81. Yeah. Breakfast memories. Mom died October 31st. 31st. The Eve of All Saints Day, mm -hmm. one of the holiest times of the year in the Roman Catholic faith, to pass into heaven. She died peacefully in the same solid oak bed that was part of the can't live without items that my dad had brought with him in his move to assisted living. The same bed she had shared with my dad for 59 years. Over her bed were the portraits of her seven children. As I lay there with her lifeless body, an overwhelming sense of what we had shared drifted through my mind as I replayed the last several years of seeking to learn, seeking to protect, and ultimately seeking to care more about whom she was than ever before in my 52 years. I had received a remarkable spiritual and life lesson after healing, caring, loving, crying, and praying with both mom and dad. It became crystal clear. The lesson I had learned lay in the center of mom's happiness. She had been loved. loved. Amen. What do you say? It's beautiful. The very last thing you wrote, Kate, says, again, say it correctly. Ooh, my hands are shaking. That's just so moving. She is buried wearing an Irish scarf and holding a morning napkin. Breakfast Memories, folks. Available on Amazon. I hope you will check it out and uh, take a deep breath when you read it because it's going to touch your soul in a way that well, my books don't. I'm, I don't write that way. And mine's are, mine are totally different. But Kate, I get a lot of books and I flip through a lot of books and go, eh, no. And I was busy when your book came because my mama was dying, and I was busy with that. And so I got life settled out, and I said, I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to read Breakfast Memories. And read it all one evening. We go to bed early and read till we get sleepy. And I knew, I said, I've got to talk to this woman. You have a gift that God has given you to share with other people, and I am so glad that you did. And I'm so glad you reached out to me, and I am so glad that people in 81 countries now are going to hear about Breakfast Memories. And you guys, you're going to love this book. 
and I hope that you will write Kate and tell her about it. You can write and tell me about it, and I'll let Kate know. So, Kate, thank you. Thank you for it all. Thank you, especially for today. Thank you. Today of all days. See, it wasn't meant to be earlier. It just was not. Thank you, Kate. Take care. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Kate. Um, she made me cry, and you know I hate that. Messed my makeup up. Now I'm going to have to go fix that. All right, we'll see you on our next episode. Bye-bye. Let's Talk Dementia would like to thank our sponsors, National Association of Veterans and Families. You can reach them at 800-352-2919 on the internet at www.navf.org. They speak veterans so you don't have to and you tell them Carol sent you when you call to inquire about benefits for the veteran, the spouse of the veteran, or both. Editor Beth. You can find Ms. Beth Crosby at EditorBeth.com. She is amazing at looking at what you've written and making sure it represents you well. Find her at www.EditorBeth.com. And HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. That's York County. 803-985-0985. They are there for the, hunt, the repair and maintenance of your Honda, Hyundai, Toyota, Kia. Tell them Carol sent you. Thanks for joining us today for Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia. To learn more about dementia, we recommend Carol's best-selling book, also titled Let's Talk Dementia. It's available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle versions. Be sure to like Let's Talk Dementia on Facebook and leave us a kind word of review on iTunes. Remember, knowledge brings power. Power brings hope. Hope brings smiles. And we all need more smiles. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll be right here when you come back to Let's Talk Dementia.